When doing calculations involving a chemical reaction, we're going to have a balanced chemical equation and recall that the chemical equation or the balanced equation is always a specific recipe and that recipe is always in moles. So if we have a question that has two different formulas in the question, for example, going from hydrogen to oxygen, uh, we are going to always have to use the balanced equation step. Often this step is the second step in a three-step calculation. So on this calculation map, we're going to see where we start and where we stop. And so if we're given grams of a formula, the only thing we can do if we have grams is use the molar mass and convert to moles. So step one will be grams of A to moles of A. And I've written here if needed, when this is needed would be if we are given grams of A. This step would not be necessary if the problem gave us moles of A. So A is always going to refer to the information that the formula uh, is, well, when we're given information about a formula. That's always going to be formula A. The problem is always going to ask us information about a second formula. So I'm always going to use that as formula B. So A and B are always going to be two different formulas. A is information given. B is what the question is asking us about. So if we're given grams of A, we have to use the periodic table to convert from grams of A to moles of A. We always need to go from moles of A to moles of B because this is the recipe ratio. And so the recipe is always in moles and remember, a balanced equation is the most common place that we do not see the unit mole written. So this step is always needed. If the question asks us about the mass of B or grams of B, then we have to convert from moles of B to grams of B using the periodic table and the formula. So we, we would calculate the molar mass of B and convert moles to grams. So if needed is if we are asked for the mass, of course that would be grams, of B instead of moles. So sometimes a question could ask us about moles of B. If that's the case, then we would stop right here. But most likely the question is going to ask us for the mass of B or how many grams of B there are. So we're going to work some examples of this uh, and I'm going to go from grams of A all the way to grams of B with this three-step calculation. So for example, do this right here. if we're asked for, we see this balanced equation, for example, if we see this equation here, two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen will always make two moles of water. Oops, and we're not going to see the word mole written. So if we are asked a question, how many, uh, I think I'll just do moles, how many moles of oxygen are needed to react with five moles of hydrogen. So we, if we look at this example, we need to figure out what we're given and what we're asked for. So here we're given moles and we're asked for moles of oxygen. So the only part of the balanced equation we're going to need is the two moles of hydrogen is going to react with one mole of oxygen. On this map, we're given moles and we're asked for moles. So this is going to be a one-step calculation. I'm going to write down what's given. If 
five moles of hydrogen, and we're going to go directly to step two. So step two is using the balanced equation. So I generally circle these numbers, or if I've rewritten the only part of the equation we need, we're going to see where these numbers come from. Two goes down here because the unit mole of hydrogen has to cancel, and then one mole of oxygen goes here. And so this question gave us information in terms of the recipe and we're asked information. So it's a one-step calculation only. So this would end up being 2.5 moles of O2. Now as far as significant figures goes, I probably should have started us out with two significant figures there so that we could end up with two significant figures there. So when we're given moles in the question and we're asked for moles, it's always going to be a one-step calculation only. If we were given the mass of hydrogen, for example, five grams of hydrogen, so if that was our given, then we would have, if we're given grams, that's when we have to do step one, going from grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. So the next few slides, I'll talk about each case specifically.